Well, good afternoon and welcome to the last edition for today of AIUC's Webinar Weeks. Um, if you're new, welcome. If you are um, uh, been attending these, welcome back. Uh, I'm glad you're joining us today. Uh, for our last topic, we've got fiber solutions for rural electric utilities. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items before we get started here. Uh, again, as all of our webinars have been about 45 minutes, uh, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, we'll leave uh, 10 or 15 minutes towards the end for questions. Please submit those questions through the chat feature. Make sure you select the drop down and submit those questions to AIEC. We'll be sure to relay those questions to our presenter. Uh, please keep your microphones muted. And if you have any questions regarding PE uh, credits, uh, please direct those to Mr. Brian Adams and he will answer any questions you might have on those. Our guest speaker today is Ms. Molly Huntley. Um, she has been with Annexter for seven years and in the utility space for two. Uh, her sole focus for Annexter is fiber and how to use it in new areas of the utility business. So without further ado, uh, I will hand it over to you, Molly. Thank you. Awesome, thank you guys for this opportunity today. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so yeah, so today we're going to talk about alternative fiber solutions. Um, so ribbon fiber is an alternative fiber solution and we'll get into that later today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to chat them in. Um, we're really going to cover ribbon fiber itself today. If you do have fiber to the home or fiber questions in general, feel free to also send those in. Um, I know we're focusing on a different solution today. So. Um, as I said, I'm a solution specialist for Annex or Wesco. Um, that means I work with our utility specialists, specifically on fiber. So basically, every single day I'm living and breathing fiber, um, the pool line hardware, the whole thing. So we already know um, that FTTX import is important. We know that there's a significant digital divide within the country. We know, especially with the pandemic, um, that internet access is essential and really better networks are the solution. But there are ob obstacles. So um, a lot of cooperatives, uh, telephone cooperatives, and even the big guys, um, AT&T, et cetera, are looking to expand their fiber networks. So that means that there's high demand for the same type of material. Um, that material is specifically loose tube single mode fiber, um, ADSS, which is all dielectric self-supporting, which you can put in the power space, um, and then the pole line hardware for any fiber application. Um, a quick note about ADSS and loose tube, they're technically made on the same line at manufacturers. So for the rest of the presentation, I'm gonna be talking about loose tube but that really does include ADSS in some procurement um, situations. So just so you know, if you don't see ADSS again, it's because it's really in um, the loose tube bucket that I'm talking about. Um, there's also high demand for the same type of labor. So contractors are needed to build out these networks because it's miles and miles of fiber, just like there's miles and miles of line. Um, so that labor is in high demand and it's becoming more expensive and harder to find, um, which is really taking a toll on getting these networks up. Um, and then there's the condensed timeline. So there are grants that are awarded that require aggressive and shortened timelines. Um, some of them are asking networks to be completed by the end of a year, which is really difficult. Um, there's high demand for quality internet, so there's pressure from the consumer side to really get that internet out to people who don't have access to a quality and affordable internet. Um, and there's pressure from competition to get into the market sooner because we all know um, as soon as you sign that contract, the two-year contract, it's really hard to get out of and there are a lot of fees for that. Um, and then as we've all learned the hard way this year, there, there have been significant supply chain disruptions to the market due to the pandemic. So there is hope, there is a solution. That possible solution is ribbon fiber. So what is ribbon fiber? So ribbon is basically a flat 
piece of glass and it has multiple strands of glass glued together so that it's flat. So on this screen, we're highlighting the fact that it's just a flat cable. And because it's flat, you can get more fibers into a cable itself. Now in a rural application, probably not gonna need 3,456 fibers, but I do think it's interesting to show that it is possible. The other great option is that ribbon fiber, while it may look different than regular loose tube, um, it's the same type of glass. So it's still 250 microns. You can still get it in single mode and it is made by all the major manufacturers. So why would we look at ribbon splicing? So, or excuse me, ribbon fiber. So first of all, there is fast, it's faster splicing. So instead of splicing a single fiber, um, 144 times, if you had a 144 fiber count, um, you are going to just splice it 12 times. So think about that. So instead of having to splice 144 times and paying someone to splice 144 times, you only have to pay them to do it 12 times. That's huge saving. So that's lower labor costs as we were talking about, and that's faster deployment. So ribbon fiber really takes care of two of the main points earlier in that the contractors can get the fiber up much faster. Um, the network owner, whether that's a cooperative or a joint venture between like a telephone cooperative and an electric cooperative, um, can start getting their ROI as soon as possible and hooking up um, consumers. Lead times are definitely better on ribbon right now. So Loose tube, the last quote I got on loose tube fiber was 38 weeks. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty impatient. I don't really want to have to wait 38 weeks to get a very vital project up and running. Um, ADSS, we're looking at around 27 to also 30 weeks. Ribbon, we're looking at five to 10 weeks. Also, this is material that is in stock at most places. Um, because it's been trusted in the telecom industry for years. So one thing that's really important to note about ribbon fiber is that it is, it's not necessarily a new product. Um, the telephone companies and the telcos have been using it for a long time. So if you were to look at ribbon fiber, you would not be the first cooperative to look at it. You wouldn't be the first network owner to use it, which is something that I think is really important to point out because the electrical cooperative market is all about reliability and power to their customers. And I know that ribbon fiber is just as reliable as loose tube. So that's just something good to know. And then additionally, you're gonna use the same pole line hardware that you would use for a loose tube fiber application. So what's really cool about FTTX in general is that the pole line hardware with a couple of exceptions on dead ends are gonna be the same pole line hardware that the cooperatives are already used to using when they're putting up their line. Um, isn't a lot of difference when it comes to installing that. So that's really exciting there. So then, we have an outside plant environment. So the first thing I wanna talk about is that Wesco Annexter has the ability to help with all of this material. So we can help with the networking equipment on either end of this system. We can help with anything in the middle. And the best part is, is that ribbon fiber can fit almost anywhere on this. So. This is definitely more of a telecom setup because you have the strand and lashed option um, and it's in the telecommunications space. Um, ribbon can also come in armor and so it can also go underground or be pushed through conduit. One thing to note about ribbon is that if you are looking to do an ADSS deployment, so you're looking to put the fiber in your power space, there's only one type of fiber that can do that and it's called RPX. And I know in Illinois, um, as I used to live there, 
um, the spans and the ice loading are going to be a little bit much for RPX. So if you do want to look at ribbon, we really do need to look at a strand and lash deployment, um, which is going to be in this telecom space or it's going to be underground. Um, and so again, I know we're moving through this a little quickly just because um, ribbon itself is um, relatively new. So if there are any questions about fiber deployment, um, strand and lash versus ADSS or underground, um, feel free to chat those in as well. But basically the best part is, is that this ribbon can be used in any portion of this drawing. So a question I get a lot about ribbon fiber is that it's really different than loose tube. And really it's not, it is the same process, it just has different tools. So if you were to add a connector, let's say, and you needed to terminate a ribbon cable, um, for a loose tube where it just has a single buffer, you're going to need a fan out kit because you're going to need to get that fiber up to 900 microns to attach a connector. You're going to have to do the same thing with ribbon. Now, the, one of the other um, concerns I get is that with loose tube, it's really easy to drop off fiber to either to save it or to provision it, right? Well, you can do the same thing with ribbon. Um, you just need to de-ribbonize it. So as we were discussing earlier, ribbon fiber is glued together um, and it can be separated. So you can separate that fiber. You can use um, a tool like this, and it is um, it's basically a ribbon separator. Um, I have heard people use other tools, but I wouldn't recommend that. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, and so basically this allows you, if you have um, a 12 fiber ribbon sheet, you can cut off or de-ribbonize as much ribbon as you need and provision it and leave it where you need it, just like you would with loose tube. So really, um, it's the same process that you would use for loose tube with provisioning and leaving fibers. It just is a different form and you may need some different tools. So um, any questions so far? All right, so moving on to splicing. So splicing is really obviously important. It's the, the main process with um, splicing ribbon. So the process, again, with ribbon cable, just like it would be for loose tube, is you're going to strip the jacket, you're going to clean the glass, you're going to cleave it, and then you're going to splice it. Now, one thing to note is that you will need a ribbon splicer. Um, you can't always um, use a single, or excuse me, a loose tube splicer. You will need uh, a ribbon splicer so you can splice all 12 fibers together. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I am going to um, open up another screen because I have a little video um, that will show the process of um, splicing. So give me one second to do that. All right. Hello, in this video, I will be demonstrating how to perform an arc calibration on the KR-12A all-in-one ribbon splicer. First, turn on your splicer. So what he's doing is an arc calibration, but the process of preparing the fiber is going to be the exact same. Next, process. when it's come to your home screen, press menu, calibration, arc calibration, and then prepare your fiber. Turn your stripper on. Load your first fiber. 
leaving a one inch tail protruding from the end of the holder. Strip, clean, and cleave your fiber. Then place your holder in your splicer. Next, load your other side. and repeat. Close your wind cover and press start. This process takes approximately 20 seconds. Once your calibration is complete, open your wind cover and remove your holders. This completes this. So that's the video. I'm going to reshare the presentation. So give me one second. So um, that is an Ilsen Tech Fusion Splicer. And um, let me move the screen out of here. Sorry, y'all. Um, so that's an Ilsen Tech Fusion Splicer. Um, it's really cool because it comes um, in an all-in-one. So instead of having to carry all the tools around, it's on the machine as it showed you. Um, so you have the stripper on the machine, you have the cleaver on the machine, um, and then it'll just, it'll just splice it right there. And as you saw, you can do 12 um, splices all at once. So just think about how much time that'll save you to look at an alternative ribbon um, or an alternative fiber. Um, so that's kind of how fusion splicing works. And again, the process that he went through to prepare the cable is the same process we would use for loose tube or ADSS. So um, as we've discussed, the fiber market, because there is such high demand to put together quality, uh, quality networks for the U.S., um, another thing to think about is having a distribution partner who has the ability to um, get the material that you need when you need it. So Annexter Wesco has great relationships across the fiber market. Um, what we really like to do for our customers is make sure we can streamline the supply chain for the fiber market. As I said, we, the lead times are getting significantly longer. And so really having a distribution partner that understands that lead times are getting longer and what alternatives there are is really important. So one thing that we can do and distribution can do is use multiple manufacturers to have material for our customers and then distribute it in a more streamlined um, way than the usual way of trying to go to a bunch of different um, manufacturers individually. So this is definitely something to think about if you are looking to go into a fiber um, deployment uh, just because it really is helpful to have a partner who, who is there to support your needs and support your project timeline. Um, another great thing to think about is that you are not alone. Um, you're not alone in this fiber deployment. Um, I know that there are a lot of consultants out there and the consultants are great. Um, if you just wanted to start talking through options or if you just wanted to look at different products and understand um, what the best way to proceed was, 
Annexer has a full technical staff. We call them the Technical um, Solution Support Team, um, or TSS. Um, and they have helped multiple customers work through different options. Um, they are vendor neutral, and they really just wanna make sure that they answer your question about what products would work for you in the best possible way. Um, as you can see, we have different association and committee memberships, um, and we have different technical certificates. So it's really a strong part, and this is something that our customers can use. Um, you can talk to your local Annexer or Wesco rep about this if you have specific questions. Um, so there's someone I would go to if there were more detailed or more technical questions about a fiber deployment. Um, they've talked through how to pull fiber before for customers. So it's a really great resource that I just want to make sure that um, customers are aware of um, when we're talking through this. Um, also, we have worked really hard. It's not just the fiber that's gaining on lean times, but it's the outside plant hardware. So whether it's splice cases, it's pole line hardware, um, it's safety equipment. Annexer and Wesco are really working hard to make sure we have everything in stock or every, everything within a reasonable amount of time to get to our customers to deploy their project. Um, so really this has just been about ribbon fiber. Um, if anyone has questions about broader fiber solutions, I'm more than happy to go into that now. So um, one of the decisions, so one thing to think about, especially when we're looking at this, is when you're looking at alternative um, fiber, it's going back again to that communication space or that power space. Um, and so one thing um, to think about is how fast you want to be able to um, restore your communication network. Um, so one benefit to looking at a strand and lash application is that um, that could be restored um, sometimes a little bit quicker because you could use um, a different contractor to put that up while your crews are getting the electricity back up. Um, but ADSS is also, you know, it's in the power space, so linemen can also put that back up on, uh, put that back up as well um, because they have that uh, certification. So that's also something to think about when you're designing this is how much time and how involved you want your own crews to be um, because that can really dictate um, how fast a network gets up. So I know that Illinois has um, con a Connect Illinois grant out there. Um, another thing that Annexer can help with is we also have consultant relationships. Um, and that's one way to work through getting grants for this material. Um, so that's also really important is thinking through um, access to capital, access to loans, access to grants to really put together um, a network that's going to serve your community. So if there aren't any more questions, that's really what I had, just an alternative to solution to the typical um, fiber material that's out there. Um, I don't know, are there any questions? We don't have any questions right now, Molly. Um, okay. If anyone does have any questions, if you'd like to submit those through the chat function, uh, we can relay those for you. We, we haven't gotten any questions come in. Uh, do you have anything else that you'd like to speak on today? 
No, I just, I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, hopefully we'll be able to demonstrate some of this in person one day. Um, you know, more than happy to talk with anyone um, outside of this presentation if they have questions, um, you know, but just wanted to offer an alternative perspective and a way to possibly get a network up a little bit faster with different product. Okay, um, and before um, you do in the meeting, Molly, if you could provide your contact information to anyone who, um, to be able to get in touch with you. Uh, otherwise, they're more than welcome to reach out to us here at the AIEC. I'm more than happy to put them in contact with you. Um, but if you could provide that information to everyone, please. Sure, do you want me to just put it in the chat? Yeah, that would be great. Okay, let's do that. And I sent that to everyone. Obviously, if you have a local Annexter or Wesco rep, um, they do know me and they also know my counterpart, Megan Wedig, who is actually out of um, the Midwest. I'm actually out of Atlanta, but more, both of us are more than happy to help with any kind of questions that anyone may have. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Molly, for taking the time today to um, present this information to us. If we do have anyone interested in reaching out, Molly's contact information is there in the chat section. Um, for those who have called in, we are taking next week off for Thanksgiving. We will resume webinar Wednesdays on December 1st at 9 a.m. with Introduction to Distribution Automation. Um, registration for that will stay open until one hour before the meeting start. Uh, AIEC.coop backslash webinar weeks for all of those upcoming. I think we still have eight left to go after today. Um, thank you so much to everyone who called in. Again, Molly, thank you so much for taking the time today. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you all back here on December 1st. Thanks, everyone. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Molly. Have a great day. You too. Bye.